There's a little song in my spirit, and I hope you know it. And if you don't, I'll come over there and play it. But it's, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Oh, Lord, whatever you're doing. Don't do it without, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, whatever. You're doing in this season. Don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Oh, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. One more time, Lord, whatever. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Oh, Lord, don't do it without me. Oh, Lord, Lord, whatever you're doing. Don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now let your word go forth with power and anointing in Jesus' precious name. You may be seated in his presence. Just want to say it's so good to see so many of you. I recognize some of your beautiful faces from other places. And after I graduated from Oral Roberts University in 19... Whoop, whoop! I am a graduate of ORU. Their fight song is different, so it won't mean anything if I sing it to you. <clears throat> you wouldn't want to hear it because it's the old song. But I taught school for three years, right down the street here at Hamilton Junior High. And uh, 74, 75, 76, and 77, I helped, uh, along with Pastor Gary, start the Higher Dimensions and Bishop Pearson, start the Higher Dimensions ministry. But after 30-something years ago, today, one of my former students from 1974, 75, 76 is here. And Glory, I just want you to wave your hand. She came today to be in church with her old school teacher. Love you, Glow. God bless you. Hallelujah. The Lord woke me up at 4.30 this morning. I wanted to go back to sleep, and I tried. And I had a message to preach to you today. And the Lord told me to preach that message, but preach it from a totally different aspect. All I have... It's just a few notes. I had to throw my notes away on my iPad. But my message today is revive, renew, and recharge. Say revive, renew, and recharge. God told me a few months ago to stop complaining about the church. <sighs> Ha! 
Because I know when we all get together in our little groups and we're honest, we have little chats with each other about the church, don't we? About where the church is going, what the church is doing. Let's be honest. We talk about the seeker-friendly churches, don't we? Everybody's quiet. We talk about all those seeker-friendly churches. We talk about the churches, get the people in and out quick. We, we have a tendency to uh, talk about the church. And God said, Helen, don't let another word of complaining come out of your mouth about my church. Everybody just lift up your hands. Say, dear Jesus, forgive me for complaining about the church. I am the church, and if I'm complaining, I'm complaining about myself. So forgive me, Jesus. Today, I decree you're going to revive, renew, and recharge the church in this season. Hallelujah. You see, there is a voice. There is a voice of God that speaks louder than CNN, MSNBC, Fox News. There is a voice that is greater than any other voice. It's greater than the judge, the lawyer, the doctor. It's even greater than the preacher and the bishop and the pastor's voice. It is the voice of the living God. And this is what the living God says about his church. His church. When he speaks, it is his word. When he speaks, it is the truth. And he says, I, God, say God. God. I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will no longer be moved by what I see in other places or what I feel I will be moved by what the Lord said I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us we're coming into the greatest hour the church has ever known somebody say amen Amen. that's why God gave you this building because this church is going to be used in this community to birth the next revival that is getting ready to sweep into Tulsa, Oklahoma. You had to be put here. You had to be positioned here. God's timing was perfect. He was not late. He was not too early. He said, I'm going to set them in in a Kairos moment because I am coming to my church. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, some folks say the church is dead. Church attendance is down. I'm giving you facts, not the truth. Church attendance is down. We got a lot of seeker-friendly churches. That's true. One prophet of old said the church is like a picnic. We're as weak as the tea, cold as the ice cream, and as dead as the chicken. That's what they spoke over the church. I refuse to accept that. I am standing today in a church that is revived, renewed, and we're recharging ourselves for the next move of God. I will not be moved by what I see. I'm moved by the word of God. That's the truth, but the facts are God says, help me, Jesus. God says the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former house. You better praise Jesus. I said, you better praise Jesus. The glory that is getting ready to sweep over, is getting ready to sweep over in God's house. You're going to, excuse me for being loud. You're going to experience some things. Sister Helen, put on your soft voice. You're getting ready to experience the greatest move of God you've ever seen in your life. You need to understand that the atmosphere, ah, help me Jesus, you need to understand that the atmosphere in this building has already been charged with miracle signs and wonders. We are
are here today to fan the flame of what God already started. To recharge, to renew, to revive, to rekindle what God did before. And we will see it in greater measure. Give somebody a high five. Say, we're going to see it in greater measure. In John 11, help me Holy Ghost. In John 11, before I get to John 11, the book of Joel says, In the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Get ready for the outpouring. Old men, young men. Men, women, men, we're all going to receive another dimension of the anointing and the glory of God that we have never seen before. Hallelujah. So in John 11, Lazarus, to me, is a type of the church. So they come to Jesus. I'm not going to read because of the time element because you can follow along with me. The Bible says... In John 11 that Jesus is out preaching and they come to Jesus and they tell Jesus Jesus your friend Lazarus is sick there's been a cry and an interceding going out from the body of Christ saying Jesus your church is sick Jesus something's wrong we programmed out the Holy Ghost I'm not talking negative about the church now. I'm just speaking some facts. We, we programmed out the Holy Ghost. We've put time limits on everything. Last week, not this weekend, but last week, they put me up when I was supposed to be sitting down. I looked over at the pastor. I said, what am I supposed to do? You're putting me up when the paper says I'm supposed to be sitting down. He said, I'll give you 20 minutes. I said, I'll do my best. When 20 minutes was over, I sat down. Hallelujah. They came to Jesus, Lord, the one you love. There's, there's no people God loves more than his church. In fact, in the book of Esther, the Bible says that the king had a party, and he had a six-month party. The Bible decrees it as 180 days. The king showed off his palaces. He showed off all... The beauty, his horses, his stadiums, his theaters, all of his beautiful gardens. But when the par party was winding down, and I believe the party is winding down. Somebody going to get this who has prophetic ears. I believe the world as we know it is winding down. The last thing the king wanted to show off was his bride. God is getting ready to show us off. Look at somebody say, God's getting ready to show you off. God is getting ready to put us on display. That's why God's going to give you a miracle. That's why God's going to restore your marriage. That's why God's going to heal your body. That's why God's going to save your children. Because God's getting ready to show us off. He's getting ready to parade us to the world. So we show the world that he is right, he is real, he is, he is God. He's God all by himself. Getting ready to show us off. You know what? It was very interesting because when they told Jesus that Lazarus was sick, we've been telling him, Jesus, come visit the church. The church is sick. Jesus' first statement was, this sickness is not unto death. Some of us have pronounced death on certain churches. I want to tell you the sickness is not unto death. God is going to renew, revive, restore, and recharge in this season. You're going to see some pastors throw off their toupees, get transparent in front of the people, you're going to see God do some signs and wonders in some churches that the Spirit hadn't been in in years. I want to tell you what the church is going through right now as a whole. I'm not talking about this church. This sickness is not unto death. Look at somebody. Say, this sickness is not unto death. <laughs> Jesus doesn't seem to be too worried about it. He takes his time. He knows the church is sick. He knows Lazarus is sick. 
something wrong with the church, but he, he takes his time. Then he, uh, he didn't rush because God's timing is perfect. Say God's timing is perfect. And even though there's been a cry of intercession coming from the intercessors, God, do something in your church. Like the old song says, you can't hurry God. Oh no, you just got to wait. You got to trust him and give him time. No matter how long he takes. Don't know if I can read that. He's God and he don't hurry. He'll be there, don't you worry. He may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. Say he's right on time. Say he's right on time. He was right on time us getting in this building. He is right on time with what God is doing in this season. Uh, he hasn't missed it. Look at somebody say, he hasn't missed it. So then Jesus, a few scriptures down, he says, let's go. He says, Lazarus is just sleeping. I'm going to wake him up. I want to tell you right now, people of faith hear things that other people don't hear. Like Elisha heard the sound of the abundance of rain. I want you to know today I hear God's footsteps. Blop, 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 blop. I hear his footsteps. I hear him stepping down out of heaven onto earth. He is coming. And his disciples... They didn't totally understand. He said, I'm going to go wake up Lazarus. I'm going to go wake up my church. Father, I thank you all over America, particularly today in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We decree and we declare from the Catholic Church to the Baptist to the Methodist to the Jehovah's Witness. Oh, to the Lutheran, to the Presbyterian, to the Pentecostal, to the Assembly of God, to the Church of God in Christ, we decree and we declare, God, you're waking up your church. Somebody say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. The disciples fought Jesus. They didn't want to go. They didn't really care about Lazarus. They didn't want to go because the last time they were there, they were threatened for their lives. There are a lot of people today who don't want to go back into the deep things of God because they have a fear. They have a fear they'll lose family. They have a fear they'll lose friends. They have a fear that we'll start swinging from the chandeliers again and people will be calling us crazy and cray-cray. And They have a fear. The disciples were afraid, but Jesus says we're going to go up anyway. Say Jesus is coming to his church. Say Jesus is coming to his church. He said I'm coming to renew, I'm coming to revive, and I'm coming to recharge my church in this season, in this moment. I'm going to go wake her up. Thank you Jesus. <clears throat> and so they got to the place where the church was dead, where Lazarus was dead. They came to the home of Lazarus and one of the sisters we love the sisters in the church, don't we? The mothers of the church. Lord, if you'd been here. Lord, if you'd moved in the 60s. Lord, if you'd moved in 75. Lord, if you'd, Lord, if you'd moved in 94. Lord, if you'd moved in 2000. God, if you'd just sent the revival then. The church wouldn't be like it is. But you don't understand God has a timing. God has a season. And God has a plan. But even in, in their fear and their doubt, they said, Lord, I know right now anything I ask of you, you will do it. God is saying, have faith. Look at somebody and say, have faith. Trust God. The church will rise again. Lift up your hands all over this building. Say, the church will rise again. Say, we're coming up. We're coming out. We're coming up. We're coming out. Fully charged. Ready to go. Renew, revive, recharge. Second sister said the same thing. We got to get rid of all fear and doubt and unbelief because without faith, the Bible says it's impossible. 
I think we think that the Bible says without faith it's difficult. Without faith it's hard. No, that's not what Jesus said. He said without faith it's impossible to please God. If you're sitting here today and you're lacking faith in your life, stir up the gift that's within you because everybody has been given a measure of faith. Stir it up. Believe God. I love Jesus. Jesus gets right to the point. After he has their little conversation, he says, uh, take me to the cemetery. Take me to the church because I'm getting ready to do something. He arrives at the cemetery and the sisters say, don't go in there now because by now he stinks. I'm going to be real for a moment. I need a Kleenex. I think sometimes Jesus comes into his church and he has to get a Kleenex. Not this church. I think he has to get a Kleenex and put it over his nose. Because some folk, there may be a few in here, not you, the one sitting next to you, are dead. Singing the songs. Doing the dance. Lifting the hands. Hallelujah. Glory. But it doesn't show up any place but on Sundays in your life. The dance, the praise, it's not on you on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's only on you on Sundays. Woo! Woo! But I want to tell you one thing about my Jesus. Jesus doesn't care about my stench. He's going to come right up in my face. Jesus shows up at the cemetery. And he weeps. Men have misinterpreted this scripture for years. I'm not saying I'm the allness of the muchness or the isness and I have all the revelation. I'm not saying that. People have misinterpreted. Just like the people, the church folk around Jesus said, Oh, isn't that sweet? Jesus is crying. Because the church is dead. Jesus is crying. Because Lazarus is dead. Jesus wasn't crying because Lazarus was dead. Jesus was crying because their faith was dead. They had lost all faith. Sitting up in the church, you know God can, but you don't believe he will. You know God is able, but you sit in worry and angst and full of anxiety. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. Jesus is weeping because of their lack of faith. He weeps because of our lack of faith. Because some of us don't believe things are going to get better. We believe things are going to get worse. And in the world, they may get worse. The Bible says darkness covers the earth. But it says light shall rise upon God's people. Now Jesus then, the church, some churches are in a position like Lazarus. They cannot help themselves. They're in a tomb. Lazarus himself could not roll away the stone and there's some churches on their own that cannot roll away the stone. What is the stone? The stone is fear. The stone is doubt. The stone is unbelief. What do we do every Sunday in this church? We try to help you roll away the stone in your life so that you can get free, so that you can fulfill your purpose, so that you can fulfill your destiny, so you can be recharged, refired, rekindled, and on fire for God doing what he's called you to do. So they rolled away the stone. I'm here today to help you roll away the stone. 
Pastor Lawrence, every time he stands up in this building, he's trying to help you. You can't help yourself always at this moment. So God uses people in your life. God has certainly used my friends in my life to help me roll away stones. Before Jesus called Lazarus forth, Jesus said this, Father, I thank you that you have heard me and you will hear me now. And what you will do in this place, this is Helen's edition, and what you will do in this place, God, you will get all the glory for. Now I'm going to say something. Stop praying like a victim. Some of us are so used to in our lives have been the victim. We have been victim of things. We've been victim of molestation. We've been victims of racism. We've been victims of poverty. We've been victims of negative spirits. We've been victims of low self-esteem. And then what we don't realize, all that victimization in our life travels with us into the church and we get saved. And then it affects our prayer life because we pray as a victim. Lord, I'm lonely. Lord, I'm sad. Lord, I'm broke. Lord, I'm weak. Lord, when you gonna show up? Lord, what you gonna do? And you're praying as a victim and not as a victor. I stopped praying problems years ago. I pray the answers. I don't pray the problems. I, this is another point, but I don't rehearse my problems. I remember the promises. Stop praying like a victim because let me tell you, let me say it sweet. Victim prayers get you nowhere. Victim prayers get you nowhere. Nowhere. So he prayed the prayer of a victor. He thanked God in advance for what God was going to do. Whatever it is in your life where you need a breakthrough in your life, start thanking God. God, I thank you you're saving my son. I thank you're bringing prosperity in my life. I thank you for the new job. I thank you for favor. I thank you for blessing. I thank you for a new anointing. I thank you for it. I thank you for strength. I thank you for health. I thank you for victory. I thank you for restoration. I thank you. God is not moved by our needs. God is moved by our faith. I got to go on. I got to go on. If you've ever been to Israel, so Jesus after that, after he thanks God, he says, Lazarus, come forth. I wish I was a really good preacher and could get the guy on the keyboard behind me and I'd start, oh, oh, Lazarus. But I'm not going to go there, okay? But I need some help for a minute. And my brother, I just feel like I need you. Yes. I don't know you, but I need you. Okay. Okay. I'm going to use him as an example, okay? I need you to lay down flat on the ground. If you have ever been to Israel, I've been with you a couple times. If you've ever been to Israel, when you go into Lazarus' tomb, oh, I, yeah, you have to walk. Oh, I need some help. Just somebody help Sister Helen. I'm not as... Uh, something. I'm, I am something. Yes, I am. So to get into Lazarus' tomb, I am something. I am somebody in Jesus' name. So to get into Lazarus' tomb, you have to walk downstairs. Lazarus is beneath the ground, okay? So Jesus is standing up here 
and telling Lazarus to come forth. Lazarus is bound. You're just going to have to. You just listen to me. Lazarus is bound in gauze. So I didn't get a chance to talk to him before church. <laughs> Lazarus is bound from the top of his head to the tips of his toes. Some folk in church today, they're in church, but they're bound from the top of their head to the tips of their toes. Now we know because I talked about the voice in the beginning, we know when the voice of God speaks, something happens. He said, let there be light, light came. Separate the water from the land. It was done instantaneously. The words of God are all powerful. They do not change. And so when Jesus said, Lazarus come forth, this is Helen's opinion, okay? Make it real clear. I believe some of the gauze that was on Lazarus head flipped up why did God start with the head because our biggest problem is what's up here the battlefield for the mind if the devil can get your thoughts if he can get your mind girlfriend boyfriend he has got you he wants his church at he wants his church to change their mindset. So Lazarus had to start moving his head. Come on, Lazarus. You got to shake that stuff off of you. You got to get rid of that stinking thinking. You got to get rid of that victim mentality. You got to get rid of that deadly negative spirit that has controlled you out of your life. So I believe his head got free. He, he, his whole body's not free, but his head's free. I'll explain that through the word. Then, not only did God have to deal with his head, now he has to deal with his walk. So when Lazarus came forth, then part of the gauze came off of Lazarus' feet, and Lazarus began to kick his feet. Nobody, understand, nobody went into the tomb to help Lazarus get out. You wanting somebody, you wanting, uh, help me, Holy Ghost. You wanting somebody to come down to where you're at. Jesus said, do it yourself. You wanting some help, honey? Help yourself. I believe he got free probably about up to here so he could at least do this. And Lazarus, just like Lazarus, the church of Jesus Christ today, if you want to be renewed, revived, and recharged, you got to do something. We want Jesus. I'm sorry. When I was born, there was not microwaves. We had to cook it ourselves. We want everything, McDonald's drive through Chick-fil-A, microwave mush. The same way when we come to church. If he doesn't do it the first time we prayed, we worn out, tired out. Jesus is saying to the church, you got to come up another level. You want to come to a place of being revived, renewed, and recharged? You got to come to another level. Look at somebody say, come to another level. Come to another level. The first area that the church 
has got to arise to. We've got to increase our level of praying and reading the word. The way you read the word yesterday is not good enough for today. The way you prayed yesterday is not good enough for today. Now, I don't want to go all the way back to the old days, but there's some of the old days I want. We got to repair the altar in the church. We have to understand it's important to be at the altar. It's important to pray things through. It's important to seek God. It is important to fast, to pray. It is important that you know the word of God so that you have something to stand on. Say, go to another level. Come on, Lazarus, you got to go to another level. Oh, no, 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 no. First. Look at somebody say, girl, you cannot stay at the level you are at. For where God wants to take you, you got to go higher. You got to go to another place. You cannot stay where you're at. I'm just going to add in that one. You've got to, I'm just going to add into that one. You've got to go to another place in the word, in prayer, and in worship. Oh, thank you, my brother. Okay, this one you're not going to like, but it's all right. (laughs) you got to go to another level of giving everybody sit down okay I'm not going to talk about money first you got to go to another level of giving in your life give of yourself give of your time give of your attention Don't walk out of this church with a Kleenex on the floor and not pick it up. Pick it up. Take it out to the trash receptacle. Don't go into the bathroom and leave water all around the sink. Clean up the sink. Because I was raised, my dad died when I was seven years old. I'm very sensitive to single parent households. I'm very sensitive to widows. There are single parents and widows in this house that a $20 bill or a $10 bill can change their life. They can buy peanut butter and jelly and bread for their kids for school that week. They can put money in their tank to go to work. In fact, there's a woman sitting in here today, I don't know who you are, but you don't even have the money for gas to get to work this week. And God's going to give it to you, whoever you are. God's going to show up. Give of yourself. Years ago, somebody died in the church. I got there, everybody was, you know, whooping and crying around the wife, and they should have been. Don't misunderstand me. But that wife didn't need me. You know what I did? I walked in the kitchen and did the dishes. Washed them, dried them, put them up. Kitchen was clean when Sister Helen got through. Finished, hugged the woman and left the building. Nobody knew what I did. God knew what I did. Come to another level of giving in your life. Give of yourself. Ah, get out of yourself. We so into ourselves. I'm sorry. We into our problems, my stress, my difficulty. We at the altar every Sunday for our problems. How long has it been since you cried over somebody else's problems? How long has it been since you laid on your face for somebody else besides you, your four, and no more? Now I'm going to touch the parts you don't like. Don't get nervous. I never go in church, any church. My church, this church, any church I go in without bringing an offering. See, a lot of you today went to the ATM before you got to church because you're going to go out after church. You got your money. 
your $30, your $40 to go to Olive Garden, Red Lobster, McDonald's, Wendy's, wherever it is, Golden Corral, Outback. Don't get hungry on me now. <laughs> but I wonder this morning when you went to the ATM, did you say, God, what would you want me to bring? I'm not talking about tithe. Not dealing with that. That's your pastor's job. I wonder if you said, God, what kind of offering do you want me to bring to you today? It's not about the church. It's the kingdom. Now, I'm going to give you the scripture to prove it. Because I'm sick and tired of people manipulating people. I hate manipulation. This is not manipulation. I'm trying to teach you something. 1 Samuel uh, chapter 9 the Bible tells us that you're doing a good job, Lazarus. Just stay there because you're going up. First Samuel chapter 9, the Bible says Kish's donkeys were lost. So Kish sent his son, Saul, to go find his donkey. Saul took a servant with him. The Bible says that Saul and the servant went up into the mountains, went down into the valleys, went back up into the mountains, and for three days they looked for donkeys, and they couldn't find them. I'm from Oklahoma. I know how to call a pig, suey, 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 but I don't know how to call a donkey. Here, donkey, here, donkey, donk, 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 you know, come, come here, donkey. They couldn't find the donkeys. Saul said to the servant, I'm going to make this quick. Saul said to the servant, uh, I can't let this go on any longer. We need to go back to Daddy because after three days, Daddy's going to think we're lost. And the servant said, Mm. I just got to break this in. When is the last time you let someone speak wisdom into your life that you didn't think were as spiritual or as knowledgeable? Or as holy as you? God might want to use the least of these to speak a word into your life. The servant said, Saul, if you'll just hold on with me, right in the next town, I'm going to say prophet. The Bible uses the word seer, but we use seer in a different way in today's language. He said, there's a prophet in the next town, and if I can just get, if we can just get to the prophet, everything he says come true. Oh, God, just a minute. God send prophets who do not prophesy lie. And give prophophonies. God send true prophets into your church that speak without compromise in the name of Jesus, who do not manipulate God's people and give them false hopes and phony stuff. He said, if we can get to this man, he'll tell us where daddy's donkeys are. And listen to Saul's response. I cannot go see the prophet because I do not have an offering. Saul understood royal etiquette. There is a royal etiquette. There is a kingdom etiquette. We don't know about kingdoms and royalty in America because we don't have a kingdom here. We have a democratic republic. Is that correct? Yes, democratic republic. And so we don't have kingdom. We don't know about kingdom, but when I watch television, I see the Queen of England, who is one of the wealthiest women in the world. She's walking through the streets of London. People are handing her flowers, cards, and gifts. Why are they doing that? Because it's kingdom culture. It is kingdom etiquette when you come before someone great. to give them a gift. Let me bring it down to the American presidency. I'm not talking politics at this moment, so don't misunderstand what I'm saying. When in 2016, whether you liked it or not, there was a switch, a change in the government. When Barack and Michelle Obama walked out on the steps of the East Wing of the White House, Donald and Melania Trump drove up got out of their car, and Melania Trump 
brought Michelle Obama a gift because it is kingdom etiquette. It's not about how much you put in the offering. I'm not trying to get 50 out of you. I'm not trying to get 100 out of you. I'm not trying to get 20. And I'm still finishing my message. I'm not here to get in your pocket, but I'm here to help you with your pocket. So listen to what happened on borrowed money. Somebody say borrowed money. The servant said, Saul, I got some money. I got you covered. So on borrowed money, Saul goes to the prophet. And this is exactly what the prophet says. The prophet says, I've been waiting for you. How many of you all would like to hear Jesus say, I've been waiting for you? Did you know your offering, be it a quarter, a dollar, five dollars, can release heaven to open up on your behalf? Oh, watch what it did for Saul on borrowed money. Say, on borrowed money. Watch what it did for Saul. He said, I've been waiting for you. He said, the Lord told me you were coming by here three days ago. And he said, and the Lord told me to kill a calf. And I, please put on your prophetic ears. And I set aside the best part for you. God is waiting on you. You are not waiting on God. God has, is waiting to give you the best. I grew up. On po' cheese. Y'all know what po' cheese is? I grew up on canned meat from the commodity store. Po' cheese. Some meat that was worse than spam. Okay? But God in my life, due to my offerings, has set aside the best for me. If I want to go to the store and buy a filet, I can do it. If I want to buy some tin pork tenderloin, I can do it. If I want to get me some olives stuffed with some garlic, I can do it. I'm not through yet. Not only, not only did he get the best part, listen to what he said. Look at what your offerings can release to you. Not only blessings, his offering released his destiny. His offering, the prophet said today. Today, not tomorrow, not next week. The prophet said today, I'm here to anoint you as the first king of Israel. I could get high right now and I can get heavy. I can't go there. Hear me. Your offering can release to you your promotion. Your offering can cause your boss to be transferred and you get his job even though you don't have the qualifications. Even though on paper it doesn't fit. You can go from making $24,000 a year like my girlfriend did to over $100,000 a year in one day. The offering she planted on a Sunday released her boss to be transferred and she, her boss recommended that she get the job. She didn't have a bachelor's degree. She didn't have a master's degree, but she had God on her side. Oh, oh, just a minute. Your offering will release unto you God privilege. Oh, just a minute. I'm going to say the word. Can you all say it with me? It might be hard to say it at first. Say God privilege. privilege. Say my obedience obedience to God God releases in my life life. God privilege. privilege. Say God privilege is better than white privilege. privilege. Say God privilege privilege. is better than white privilege. God will take you places you never thought you'd go. 
You'll be living in houses your mama used to clean. You'll be driving. You'll be blessed beyond measure because you have God privilege. Say church. Say church. Go up another level. Say go up another level, church. Say I'm going up another level. Say I'm going up another level. The next level is the level of your faith. You've got to come to another level in your faith. Oh, you've had faith to believe God for some things. But now God is saying, believe me for bigger things. Believe me for the impossible. For I am the God of the impossible. How do you increase your faith? How do you come up to another level in your faith? I said this earlier in the message. Stop complaining about what's wrong. Stop rehearsing your past. Stop rehearsing your difficulties. And start speaking the promises of God. Say, start speaking the promises of God. Number two, praise instead of complain. If you praise, you'll be raised. If you complain, you'll remain. Just keep on complaining, baby doll, and see how far it gets you. Keep on complaining. Keep on saying, I can't. We's not able. I can't do that. Keep on saying it. If it's working for you, keep on doing it. You're in the same place today that you were last year. Because you take your words and you speak what the enemy is saying and not what God is saying. And I have a word for you. Complaining is the language of victims and the disempowered. Say that with me. Say complaining Complaining. is the language of victims and the disempowered. And say I am a victor and I am powerful in Jesus Christ. I know who I am, I will stop complaining, and I will praise. I will line up my life with what the Word of God says. You gotta increase your level of faith. Lastly, how do you increase your level of faith? Start expecting something good instead of something bad. There was a time in my life I was so victimized, codependent, down on myself, can't, I'm not able, I can't do that. Every store I'd go in, I'd go to the clearance rack first. I mean, that's being a good steward of your money too, but, but when you have the mental, mentality always of going to the clearance rack, And I was laying in the bed one morning and the Holy Ghost spoke to me. And the Holy Ghost said that day, go to Nordstrom's. Buy yourself a pair of shoes and don't buy it. Well, Nordstrom's doesn't have sales except, you know, like half a year, one time a year. Go and buy yourself a pair of shoes at full price. Because I am your God and I am your provider. You have been faithful. You're walking in balance. You pay your tithe. You give your offerings. I want to show you, Helen, and I want to take you out of that poverty mentality. Because as a child, all my clothes came from the Goodwill and the Salvation Army. The first bathing suit I ever had, now my daddy was an old-time Pentecostal preacher, and we did not believe in mixed bathing. For those of you who are in here and you who are millennials, let me explain to you what mixed bathing is. Mixed bathing is when men and women, boys and girls, get in the same swimming pool and swim. And that's what they used to call it, mixed bathing. So I never had a bathing suit. But after my daddy died, because I was poor, I got a free ride to the YMCA camp. Thank you, Jesus, for a free ride. So I got to go to the YMCA camp free, but you had to have a bathing suit. Sis, I didn't have no bathing suit. So my mother goes to the Goodwill. I'll never forget it. That bathing suit haunts me. Sometimes it just goes 
past my face. It was purple. I'm serious. It was purple. It cost a quarter and it had a hole right here in the butt. Excuse me if that offends anybody. My mother went to the TGNY. How many remember the TGNY? Hallelujah, there's still a few of us. She got a patch, ironed that patch on the backside, and I wore that 25-cent bathing suit every day to YMCA camp. We got to come out of that. God has his best for us. God has in, in balance. I'm not praying for a car I can't afford, that the payment is higher than my house payment, okay? Just so I can impress somebody at a stop sign, look at my ride. You don't even know me, but look at me. You know, I'm, I'm happening. We buy so much stuff for those reasons and waste our own money trying. I'll just leave that there. Get out of that mentality. We've got to come to another level of faith. But as you expect it and as you anticipate it, it's what will come to you. You've got to believe and expect when I was 38 years old, after having a promise at 16 that I was going to get married, 20 came and I didn't get married, 25 came and I wasn't married, and 30, 1, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, waiting on God, waiting on the promise, got on a plane, read a magazine, the magazine, it's says it's more likely for a woman over 35 to get struck by lightning than to get married. What was I going to do with that? I threw that magazine on the floor and stomped on it. I said, devil, you a lie. You a liar, devil. I don't receive this. I am expecting, I am anticipating the supernatural intervention of God. I'm expecting a miracle. A few months later, year and a half or so, got engaged and was walking down the aisle. Hallelujah. God is faithful. You have to expect and believe that his promises are yea and amen. So I'm bringing it down. Just give me your hand. Oh, yeah, I have, oh, I haven't forgotten about Lazarus. So Lazarus, go up to another level. He's there now, just wait. He's not still free. He's up on level ground with Jesus, but he's, he's not fully delivered yet. Hear me, and hear me well today. There is a cargo plane from heaven today that has your name on it. It is full of God's promises for you. It is full of things that you have prayed for, believed God for, for years. When a cargo plane gets ready to land, he just can't land, sis, helter-skelter. He has to know what the ground conditions are. What are the ground conditions? Because if the ground conditions are not good, the cargo plane, all he can do is circle until the ground conditions are correct. Seem like every time I fly into London Heathrow, they got to go in circles because the ground conditions are not ready or not prepared. I'm here to tell you today Stir up the fallow ground in your life. Revive yourself. Renew yourself. Recharge yourself in this season. Because the cargo plane is coming from heaven. Jesus is walking. I hear his steps. He is walking. He is walking toward his church right now. He's getting ready to visit us individually. 
he getting ready to show up in your house. He's getting ready to show up in your finances. He's getting ready to show up on your job. He's getting ready to show up in your children. He's getting ready to show up in your body. He's stepping towards us. But God forbid, God forbid if he has to circle too many more times. It's time, time to make a change. We are the people that can do it. I said it's time, time to make a change. We are the people that can do it. I said it's time, time to make a change. We are the people that can do it. I said it's time, time to make a change. We are the people that can do it. Look at somebody say, you are the people that can do it. Lawrence, you and Pastor Gary, come up here. Help this man up. How I know Lazarus was still bound. Because when Lazarus came out of the tomb, Jesus said to the men, loose him and let him go. Take off all of his grave clothes. Take all of, off all of his grave clothes. I cited this church this morning. It's time. It's time to renew. It's time to revive. It's time to recharge. It's not an accident that I am here on this day. It's not an accident that you are here. The only thing I can say to you, first of all, just keep your, he your heads up. Don't need any heads bowed. First of all, if you're here today and you need Jesus Christ as your Savior, run down to this altar. If there's anybody here you're not right with Jesus, maybe you've never accepted Jesus, or maybe you're in a backslidden state. Nobody has to know your business. We're not going to ask you your business. But if you need Jesus today, young man, young woman, woman, boy, and girl, get down to this altar right now. If you need Jesus Christ as your Savior. I don't know how you do altars here, so I need people who are dispatched by the house to stand behind each one of these. I don't want anybody standing at the altar by themselves. This, this is not a day of isolation. This is not a day of me anymore. It's a day of us. There's more. There's more. There's more. I'm just going to obey God. We're going to be through in a few minutes. But i got to obey God. I know in my spirit there's a couple more women. Say yes to God. Say yes to God, sissy. Say yes to God, my sister. It won't hurt you. It's a good day to say yes to God. It's a good day to recommit. It's a good day to give your life to Jesus. Hallelujah. It's a good day to come into the house. It's a good day because we're getting ready to step over into the greatest revival the church of Jesus Christ has ever known. Part of this revival is going to take place right here. This house is going to be a house of signs and wonders and miracles. You're going to be a people of purpose and destiny, a people who know yourself and know your God. And you walk in power and authority. God will even use you. Bring her down this way, sissy. Bring her down close. Thank you, Jesus. Here's another one. Maybe 30 more seconds. Anybody else? Mm -mm. This may be unpopular what I'm getting ready to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. Jesus did not tell us to make Christians. I said Jesus didn't tell us to make Christians. Jesus told us to make disciples. These people standing at this altar are going to become disciples of Jesus Christ. Not just Christians out of their mouth with no change in their life. 
They're going to experience change. They're going to experience miracles. They're going to experience signs. They're going to experience wonders. This church is a discipling church. We're not going to let you come in here and just blah, blah, blah out of your mouth and then be left as a stillbirth. There will be no stillbirths in this house. No stillbirths. Look at all these people. Look at all these people. Y'all put your hands this way. Put your hands this way. Pastor Lawrence, come with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. These are your people. These are the disciples God has given you. These people are sacred trusts from heaven. Now, I want you to lead them to Jesus Christ and give them instructions that you would normally do. I still want to pray something else for the people, but I feel led that it's important for you to do this as the set man in this house. Yes, Lord. Everyone at the altar, repeat after me. Father, thank you, first of all, for the word. Come on, repeat after me. Father, thank you, first of all, for the word. Father God, as we have come, come on, just repeat after me. Father God, as I have come, I come by way of faith. Father, this day, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to give my life to you. Father, this day, I accept you as Lord and Savior. This day, I accept you as Lord and Savior. This day, I accept you as Lord and Savior. Father, I'm asking by faith that you forgive me for all of my sins. Father, I'm asking by faith that you forgive me of all of my sins. Lord, I accept you into my heart, into my mind. Lord, take full control of my body and my soul. This day, I choose you over the world. This day, I belong to you. This day, I renounce all of my sin. I turn to you and I turn away from the world. And I come to you and I surrender and I submit unto your voice. Lord, thank you for receiving me. Lord, thank you for saving me. Lord, thank you for delivering me. This day, I decree and I declare that I am born again, blood washed, sanctified from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Now, God. I'm going to give you glory for saving my soul. Now, come on and give God some glory for saving your soul. Come on. You are born again. You are set free. You are a new creation in Christ. Come on. You got to believe that. You got to believe that. Come on. Give God some glory. If you said that prayer, you ought to be giving God some glory. Whether you up here or after somebody that repeated that prayer, ought to be giving God some glory that God has washed your sins. You have just decreed. The God being Lord of your life. Oh my God, thank you, Lord, for freedom. You are a new creation in Christ. All things have been washed away. Behold, all new things has come about this day. You are not your past. You are not your shame. You are not your failure. You are forgiven. It's under the blood. Thank you. Come on, tell him thank you for coming into my life. You could have died before you got an opportunity to give God, my God, your life. You could have died last night. You ought to be excited that heaven is standing up giving attention and clapping because one person has come and given her life to God hey Lord thank you oh my sheep thank you for salvation Lord thank you for deliverance Lord Lord I know as many more that should have been here Lord so Father God we thank you for those oh my God to let fear grip them oh my God we bind 
any self-righteousness. We come against eagle, any legalistic spirit, Father God. Wash our souls, Father God. Every man and every woman under the sound of our voice stands in need, Father God, of a touch from heaven. We all, Father God, a mess on our way to progress, Father God. We all need you to come in. We got kids and grandkids that need to be delivered. We got sons and daughters that struggle with their identity, Father God. As Pastor Helen decreed, sometimes you got to pray for somebody else other than yourself. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, Lord, thank you that you gave us an opportunity at 205 South Sheridan to give our life to Christ, to come sit with the King. We give you legal permission to let your kingdom, which means your presence, fully manifest, Lord. Shift the mind. Shift the mind. Shift the mind. Shift the mind. Ah. Some of y'all that just repeated the sinner's prayer, you ought to be a little bit more excited about that. Come on, somebody. Come on up here and give God some glory. Come on and thank Him for your freedom. This ain't about me. This is about you. You can't get excited about your own deliverance. You got a chance to go to heaven. You ought to be way more excited than that. I need to talk to somebody and understand salvation. God has delivered you. God has forgiven you. You got to stand a chance to go to heaven. You should be screaming and shouting and giving God some glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bring the music down as I hand it back to the woman of God. She has a prayer. She want to pray. I want to say something to everyone who came up here to be saved. I want you to know I stand with Pastor Lawrence, with Bishop McIntosh. I want you to know that we love you. And we accept you right where you're at. Being saved does not automatically mean that all of the struggles in your flesh instantaneously go away. They don't always. For some people they do. But I want you to know no matter what you go back to this week, come back to church. Get in a discipleship class. Even if you mess up, bro, we will never kick you to the curb. We will stand with you because we too have fallen, fallen short of the glory of God. Every day, most of us in here make mistakes. Do not give up on yourself. We are here and we are here for you. The church doors are open. We will walk you through this, sissy. You're not alone. And God, right now, put your hands this way. God, heal them of past hurts. Heal their wounded spirits, God. Deliver them from their past baggage. Toxic relationships. Insecurity. Self-hatred. Low self-esteem. Deliver them when they were wounded, abandoned, and rejected. And God, show them you do not reject. You do not abandon them, God. But you love them with the everlasting love. In Jesus' precious name, God, heal them totally, God. Heal them totally in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we decree and we declare today, you have stepped over on the road of freedom. Every habit, every hobby, Every addiction in the name of Jesus has to leave you in the name of Jesus. Alcohol, drugs, sexual perversion, pornography, lying, stealing, cheating, whatever it is. We decree and we declare God is restoring you back and healing you and bringing you to your purpose and to your destiny. We are a church that will help you grow. We will know you by your name. You will not be a number here. We will know you by your name. We will love you. We will shepherd you. We will take care of you. You're not alone, sis. You'll never be alone again. In the name of Jesus, just be free. Just be free. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free. Spirit of the living God. Everybody else in the building, lift up your hands. 
I'm just going to ask you today, I want you to pray for yourself. I'm not going to call you to the altar because everybody would be coming. I want you to say this a few phrases with me and then I want you to go right into talking to God. Say, Lord Jesus, I've heard your word and I'm ready to go to another level in my praying, in my praising, in my reading of the word. I'm going to go to another level in my giving, in my living, and in my faith. And the cry of my heart today is, Lord, prepare the ground of my life to receive the cargo plane from heaven. God, take out everything out of me that's not like you and replace it with your character, with your nature, with your likeness. Here I am, Lord, everything I am everything I'm not I'm yours Lord now Lord I lift up my hands and I cry out to you help me prepare my ground for the cargo plane that's coming for the blessing and the favor now you talk to God right now all over this building I don't hear you I don't hear you renew me revive me recharge me restore me rekindle me God Whatever it takes, Lord, break up the fallow ground. Change my mind. Change my heart. Change my spirit. Revive me. Recharge me. Renew me. Restore me. Because miracles are coming. Signs are coming. Wonders are coming. I'm ready. The ground is prepared. You don't have to circle another year, Lord. You don't have to circle another month. It's time for the plane to land. Woo! I said, it's time for the plane to land in my life. I'm looking to the heavens. I'm looking to the hills. My help is coming. Favor is coming. Blessing is coming. Strength is coming is coming miracles are coming favor is coming purpose is coming destiny is coming in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Holy Spirit Holy Spirit fall Holy Spirit Holy Spirit come on come on just take 30 seconds Business right here. Somebody's life depends on your worship. Your life depends on your worship. Your kids' life depends on your worship. Come on, tell the fire God to fall. Fall fresh, God. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Flow with me, church. Flow with me, church. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Burn up everything. Burn it up, God. Burn up everything. Forgive me, even as a pastor, for complaining against the church. I caught that. In the spirit, Father God. Oh my God, forgive me, Lord. Now I need to repent before the God. The presence of the Lord is here. We all got stuff in our heart. Oh my God, that would hinder the fire. Oh my God, release, release. Roll away the stone. Roll away the stone. Roll away the stone. Roll away the stone. It's me, God. It's me, God. I decree and declare. Juju, little Juju, Lord's David Peoples. I decree and declare that alcoholism will bow down. I decree and declare that my son will stand inside of 205 South Sheridan. Stand with me and stand with his mama and stand with his sister. Forgive me for doubting the promise of God. You did it for me. And I'm watching you do it for all these men that's around me. You got to do it for my son. Lord, forgive me for doubting, Father God. I repent right now before your throne. Oh my God, raise my level of faith. Raise my level of faith. Why y'all watching me? I'm going for my son. You better go for what belongs to you. You better pay attention to what's going on. The world I need. I'm decreeing for my son. You need to decree for your children, your grandchildren. Oh my God. Oh my God. I decree him. Lazarus. Lazarus, come forth. You called me up out of my prison tomb. And look at me today, God. I'm calling my son up out of that prison tomb, Father God. Come forth, Juju. Come forth, Juju. Oh my God, I believe in that faith, Tony Mills. I believe in
moment he's going to walk down these aisles with his hands submitted. I see it in the spirit. I see it, Tiki. I see him coming through the doors, Grant. My son is coming through the door. And he's going to run to the altar. And he's going to give his life to Christ. And he ain't going to never be the same. And he's going to preach the gospel according to the purpose of God and the plan. I'm decreeing for Josh, Bishop. Josh is coming out. Josh is coming out. Loose him and let him go. Loose him and let him go. Addiction's got to burn out. Alcoholism got to burn out. Methamphetamine's got to burn out. Open addiction got to burn out. Oh, I'm seeing it. Oh, she disturbed me up. The woman of God disturbed me up. I needed this word. I'm a bomb from Gilead. Hey, Lawanya. Lawanya. Oh, my God, Lawanya. If any one of you got a son, if any one of you got a daughter, a grandchild that's unsaved, speak their name. Come on, speak their name. Lord's people, Junior. Lord's people, Junior. Call your children's name now. Oh, call your mama's name out of she unsaved. Call your daddy up out of the tomb. Call your grandfather up out of the tomb. Call your grandkids up out of the tomb. By faith. Oh, by faith. Oh, my God, thank you. Oh, my she can out of the motion. Thank you, Lord. We receive it now, Lord. Father God, by faith, we receive. Bring us this Lazarus out the tomb and bring that which is connected to us out of the tomb. Thank you for that prophetic word, Father. Forgive us for doubting the promises. Oh, my God, you did it for us, now do it for our loved ones. Oh, my God, as the woman of God said, my God, there's a time and a season. Oh, my God, give us faith to wait to the timing and the season to manifest. We receive the importation from heaven here at 205 South Shirley. We thank you for the woman of God. We thank you for the kingdom culture, Lord, and the discipleship, Father God, that we do here at Going Hall for Christ Church. We understand the principle of never coming before a king empty-handed. We thank you, Father God, that you are loosing provision. And you are loosing, Father God, that what we need, Father God, to dominate this earth and take this community, Father. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for the people that's come and given their lives to Christ. We thank you that we are free. Free to do business. Free to worship you. Free to influence our communities. Free to influence our families. Free to influence our jobs, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that we will go. Therefore, go. Therefore, go. Therefore, go. Stir us up, Father God, to go and make disciples of all nations. Oh, my God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for Pastor Helen. Give us strength. Give a hundredfold return. Bless everything that's connected to her. Everything that she's believing you for, Father God, give it to her. Mm. Oh, my God, my God. Strengthen her for the journey. Thank you for the word. Ah. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for her being submitted to your spirit. You shift her from the message that she thought she was going to preach. And you woke her up at four and gave her the message that she needed to preach. I thank you for her being obedient. Thank you, Lord. Please, everyone, everyone, say this after me. Father, forgive me for speaking against the church. Lord, wash me in Jesus' name. Come on, give God a hand. Come on, give him a hand. Come on, give him a hand.